Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. Kind of feels like a Monday though. Um, so today we're gonna to be talking about biodiversity. Um, as it says here, it is basically the, the answer to every single AP question, apes question. Um, biodiversity is very, very important. Unfortunately, biodiversity is being threatened as this meme shows by climate change, pollution, species, extinction, excuse me. All right, so what? let's just go over what it means first. So bio, we all should know, means life. All right, so bio, the root word, means life. Diversity means different types of. So biodiversity means different types of life. And there are three main ways that we measure biodiversity. So we can talk about habitat diversity or ecosystem diversity, species diversity, and genetic diversity. So those are like three different ways we can really measure it. Um, and we're going to go over each way. <laughs> All right, so habitat diversity. So it's the amount, types, and area, area available in a given ecosystem. So, for example, in the rainforest, there's different layers to the canopy. Um, so we have the forest floor, the shrub layer, which is going to be smaller plants, the under canopy, the canopy, and the emergent layer. And different or organisms are going to live at different levels um, of the rainforest. You can also see, we can also talk about area of an ecosystem. So this is the Amazon rainforest. And you can see that um, it's disappearing, which is really sad. Um, but that's another way we could measure habitat diversity is just by area. <clears throat> All right, so species diversity, there's some important stuff here. So species diversity is really just the amount of different species in one area. But there's a couple different ways we can talk about this. The first is species richness, which is just the number of different species. Evenness is how close in abundance each species is. So looking at this picture for community one, our species richness our richness here is going to be one, two, three, four, four. All right, so our richness here is four. There's four different species. Um, for community, oops, this is community two. <laughs> this is two, this one's one. For this one, we also have one, two, three, four. This also has four different species. But if you look at the picture, you can clearly see, move this out of the way, you can clearly see that one is more, more diverse than two. And this is because of evenness. And this is how close in abundance each species is. So abundance just means number. So for community one, there's five of each type of tree. Whereas in community two, there's 16 of one tree and only one or two of the other trees. Um, so species diversity, yes, we can talk about richness, but they both have technically the same richness. They both have the same number of different species. But we would say community one is more biodiverse because it's more even. All right, it has species evenness. It has high species evenness. All right, the next thing we can talk about, this gets a little more fun. Um, is measures of genetic diversity, all right? So we can talk about the number of different alleles in, oops, I think we're, okay, there we go. Number of different alleles in a species. So remember we have two um, alleles for each like gene, basically, excuse me. Um, and remember back from Mendelian genetics, we have Big A, big A means homozygous dominant. That means you have two, one allele that's a big A and another allele that's a big A. So like each one of these things is considered an allele. Um, and then we have heterozygous, which is big A, little a, and homozygous, uh-oh. Autocorrect, this is supposed to be little a, little a, homozygous recessive. Um, and we can measure either genotype frequency or allele frequency. So remember frequency just kind of means like a percent. Um, <clears throat> so remember a genotype, these are the three genotypes right here and they're made up of alleles. All right, so when we're talking about genotype frequency, we're gonna be talking about what's the percent big A, big A, 
what's the percent big A, little a? What's the percent little a, little a? All right, so all you have to do is add them up. So 58 plus 40 plus 2 is 100. Did that on purpose. All right, so for to find the genotype frequency, so you have the total. Moving this out of the way. The total here equals 100. All right, that's the total. So then you're going to do 58 divided by 100 equals 58%. Times by 100 to get a percentage. Um, here, you're going to do 40 divided by 100 times by 100 equals 40%. Last but not least, 2 divided by 100 times by 100 equals 2%. All right, and that is our genotype frequency. 50% of the population is homozygous dominant, 40% is heterozygous and 2% is homozygous recessive. All right, and that's genotype frequency. <clears throat> All right, this is the more confusing one. So we can also calculate allele frequency. So remember, each of the letters represents a different allele, um, <clears throat> which is kind of like a different spot on a chromosome that you inherit from one of your parents. All right, so... First, we're going to start with our heterozygous dominant. So if we have 58 people who have a big A and a big A, how many big A's do we have in total? All right, so you're going to do 58 times 2. You're going to get 116. All right, <clears throat> how many little A's are there? Anyone? Anyone? Just kidding. No, it's here. <laughs> zero. There's zero here. Um, all right. Next, we're going to go to our um, heterozygous. So 40 people have big A, little a. So how many big A's are there? 40. How many little a's? 40. All right. Now on to our little a, little a. How many big A's are there? Zero here. How many little a's? <clears throat> Two. Mm, four. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, four. All right, so we have <clears throat> basically figured out the total number of A's, big A's, and the total number of little A's in each, um, <clears throat> in the population. All right, so now you're going to add. We have one... 56 over 44. Now we're going to find our allele frequency. Same thing. Um, so the total here would be 200. And then you're going to do 156 divided by 200 times by 100 equals... Seventy-eight percent. Clear this. So this right here is seventy-eight percent. Then you're going to do forty-four divided by two hundred, twenty-two percent. So seventy-eight percent of the alleles in the gene pool are dominant. 22% are recessive. All right, so this is another way we can measure genetic diversity is allele frequency. If you're confused, feel free to rewatch this as many times as is possible. All right, so in the comments, either private, on YouTube, I don't care. Which one has higher genetic diversity? Why? Take a second. Ecosystem one or two. All right, so the one with higher genetic diversity, it's going to be um, very similar to what we talked about with um, species diversity. So you'll see that, you know, all of the different genotypes here are present. 
Um, we can talk about genotype richness. They're all present here. Um, but we're going to be looking at evenness now. So in ecosystem one, the majority of the population, oops, majority of the population is big H, 90%, with only 5% heterozygous and 5% homozygous recessive. So if we were to do the allele frequency, we would have low numbers of little h and high numbers of big H. So it's not very genetically diverse. It's pretty much all going to be dominant alleles. This one, however, you'll see that it's pretty even. And if you were to do the math here, um, it would come out with even numbers of dominant and recessive alleles in um, this area. So that's what we want. We want evenness. We want to make sure that there's a lot of individuals who are who have good genetic diversity, that there's different genes in the gene pool. All right, so why do we care? All right, so why do we care? If, let's say, we have high habitat diversity, there's lots of different habitats in this ecosystem, and there's high species diversity, and there's high genetic diversity. Let's say disaster strikes. That could be a natural disaster, like a tornado. It could be a human-made disaster, like clear-cutting a forest. It could be a virus or a bacterial infection. Drought, fires, climate change. Um, when we have greater amounts of diversity, there is a more likely chance that organisms are going to survive disaster. All right, so these, all of these things are gonna kill and get rid of the habitat, the species. And when it kills some of the species, it's gonna lose some genetic diversity. If there's already low amounts of all of these, we could have an entire ecosystem collapse. All right, so if there's low levels of diversity and a disaster comes through and wipes out a bunch of the population, it's not gonna survive. But if there's high um, biodiversity, it might have a chance of surviving. And one of the biggest threats really right now, um, we always think of climate change as being really the biggest threat um, to our world that we're creating, um, but it's really our loss of biodiversity. We'll talk about this in a bit, but later on, but we're going through a mass extinction right now. And scientists are really, really worried that if we don't do anything to curb it, um, we could have ecosystem collapse in a bunch of different areas, which is not good. All right, um, <clears throat> so for your interactive notebook, I'm gonna be asking you to do all the calculations that we just did. Um, you're gonna be looking at two streams, a natural stream and a channelized stream. So a channelized stream is one that they put in concrete um, instead of having it run over the ground like it normally would. Um, and some things that will help you, um, the different habitats that we can talk about for streams, we have a riffle, uh, which is where the water gets all bubbly. Um, run is kind of where it, you can see it more smooth gliding, like here. And then a pool, which you can kind of see up here, is where up here um, is where the water kind of like sits and flows slowly. Um, we can also talk about vegetation. It's called riparian vegetation, and it's vegetation along the sides of the stream. So that also is a different habitat there as well. All right, so you're going to have to be looking for these in these two pictures. All right, not too hard. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, you're going to go through, and you are going to calculate. So you're going to go through and mark um, habitat, if it's present or not present for the riffle, the run, and the pool, and the riparian vegetation. Um, and then you're gonna also talk, do the species richness um, and evenness, and then genotype frequency. So feel free to rewatch as much as you need to. If you need help, office hours every day, two to 2.20, and I will see you guys later, bye. Maybe.